Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 81. We've been doing this thing of solving for the missing parts of a triangle. And we're gonna add one more tool to our arsenal, one more arrow to our quiver of how we can do this. So let's just recap what we know so far. First, the basics. Every triangle has six parts, three angles, and three sides. All right, if we know one side, and two other parts, we can solve it. Okay, so one of the parts has to be a side, uh, but we can work with a combination of angles and sides otherwise. Okay, so let's review the tools you, going from the ones we've been using the longest to the ones that are the newest. There's three. Okay, one, if we have a right triangle, we can use sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? We've been doing that uh, for quite a while now. I wanna say lesson 43 maybe is where we first started using it, of algebra two, so a good long time. Um, that's basic, but we have to have a right triangle in order to do that. Two, if it's not a right triangle, but we have a matching pair And by matching pair, I mean an angle and a side. So I'll just write that so you're not confused about what the heck a pair is supposed to be. If we have a, a matching pair, an angle and a side that go together, we can use the law of signs. Da, 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 da. We learned that last time. We set up proportions and we do side A over the sine of angle A. And we don't need to use all three of them. We can use any two that we want, right? But this proportion exists between the length of the side and the sine of the angle. And we can use that to solve for any of these missing parts. But we do have to, we have one caveat on this one, beware of ambiguous angles. Which is to say, if we're solving for the angle, we have to consider both the first quadrant angle and the second quadrant angle and use common sense along with the picture to figure out which one is right. So this is one little caveat with the law of signs that we have to be careful of. This is gonna come back in our conversation today. Today, our new option is step three. If it's not a right triangle, Sorry, I drifted. If it's not a right triangle and we don't have a matching pair, we can use the law of cosines, our new friend. Ah, 
squeezing it in. Law of cosines. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to do this, but I just want you to understand that law of cosine works in a more desperate situation. It's not a right triangle, so we can't use sine, cosine, and tangent the usual ways. And it does. we don't have a matching pair, so we can't use the law of sines. So the law of cosines will work in a more desperate situation. What I want to point out to you before we go on is that in solving a single triangle, you can use any combination of these, right? Um, that apply. Obviously, if it's not a right triangle, we'll never be able to use sine, cosine, and tangent. But we can use this along with our other tools like the interior angles have to add up to 180, things like that. Um, we don't have to use the law of cosines to find every single piece of information in a triangle. A lot of times we just have to use this to kind of get enough information so we can use some of our other tools. So just because we're using the law of cosines once in solving a triangle doesn't mean we have to use it for all the missing parts. So what we do to use the law of cosines is we choose a pair, a side and an angle, that we wish we had. That sounds weird, but when we do them, you'll understand what I mean. And I know this sounds like something I would say, choose the pair that we wish we had, but that's exactly how John describes it too. And then we, for that side, now it's supposed to be lowercase p and uppercase p, but it's really hard to distinguish between those. So when I am writing notes, that is my lowercase p. It looks kind of like a cursive p. That is the side, and then my angle will be an uppercase P that looks different than that, okay? So that's how I'll maintain the difference. To use the law of cosines, this is the formula. This right now just looks like a confusing mess. It'll make a lot more sense in a minute, but get down this formula um, because that's what we'll be using to solve these problems. And I know right now you're like, A and B, what the actual heck are you talking about, lady? But we'll, you'll see when we do the example. I just want you to have the formula in front of you. I'm gonna copy the formula on to the next page, and then we will do the first problem. How many are there? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this will be example 81.1, and here it is. The side p squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of big angle p. Okay, Um, there's one other thing I want to say back here. This can be used to solve for either the side or the angle, but ideally we use the law of cosines with a known angle and an unknown side. So what I'm saying is that we have to know one or the other of these in order to um, use this formula and it works best if we know the angle and we solve for the side. We can do it the other way, but this is ideal. All right, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, now let's do our problem. 81.1, we have a nice little triangle here. I'm going to draw it for you. I do recommend drawing the triangles. 
I know, I said that so many times, I'm like a broken record, but it helps. I'm all for, I'm not doing this to torture you, I'm doing this to make problems easier for you. Okay, so we look at this triangle and John tells us to solve the triangle for its missing parts. He doesn't tell us how, he just says do it. Oh, John. Okay, so first we think, all right, let's use our basic trig functions. But we look around for the right angle marker and we go, dang, it's not a right triangle. So we can't just rely on sine, cosine, and tangent. Bummer. Then we think, okay, law of sines. For that, to use the law of sines and set up all those nice little proportions, we would have to have at least one pair, an angle and a side, that go together. This is the only angle we have and his side is an unknown. So law of sines is not going to work. So we're gonna use the law of cosines. And the first thing we do is we determine the pair we wish we had. Choose the pair we wish we had. That's what I said right here. Choose the pair we wish we had. And I also told you here, I'm gonna just flip so you can see completely, make sure you have this in your notes loud and clear. Choose a pair that we wish we had. And then I also said, ideally, use it with a known angle and an unknown side. So, now we go back to our triangle and we go, okay, well, how do we know which is the pair we wish we had? Here's a missing angle and a known side. Here's a missing angle and a known side. This one has a known angle and a missing side. You might be tempted to think, oh, why don't we just use Pythagorean theorem to solve for x? It's not a right triangle, so we can't use Pythagy either. But what I see is the, this is the pair that I want to use. This is the pair that I quote unquote wish I had. And the reason I chose it is because it has the angle, but not the side. And that is what I said was ideal. So we're going to let the side P be equal to x. And we're going to let the angle be 36 degrees. Now I will set this up. But what are A and B? A and B are the other two sides. So we can call that one 7 and that one 10. Whoops. I said 10. But I wrote 7. So let's go back here now. And let's add this to our other our information. Okay, that's what A and B, that's where we get those values. So, flipping back, once again, in our triangle, the other two sides are 7 and 10. Okay, so now we have all the variables we need to set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in X for P. You don't need to, but that just helps me relate the equation to my picture better. So I'm going to say X squared equals... 7 squared plus 10 squared minus, now we have to multiply a bunch of stuff together, 2 times 7 times 10 times the cosine of 36 degrees. Okay, what I like to do is I like to get this calculator ready and then we'll switch over and because we need the calculator to do this. So x squared equals 49 plus 100 minus 140 times the cosine of 36 degrees. I just simplified the numbers, right? Now I use a calculator and I run this much through of it, 36 degrees, then the cosine function, then times 140. Don't worry about the minus sign yet. Times 140. What I get for this is 113.26. Okay, then x squared equals 149 minus that. So x squared equals, do the math on this, and it turns out... to be 35.5 
0.74. Before I start filming, I always run through the calculations just to make sure I have all the answers since I can't calculate as I go. And you can do you can do this most of this work on your calculator. I mean, obviously, some of these things are so easy you can do them in your head. Um, so 149 minus the, those are the two squares. This 113 is this big chunk. I subtract. This is what I get. Then you need the calculator to take the square root function. I estimate before I calculate and go, that's going to be a little less than 6. And the answer I get for x equals 5.98. So what we did first is we used the law of cosines. And we found one more of the missing sides, one more of the sides. So this equals 5.98 now. I'm writing my answers in up here. Okay, beautiful. Now we have a pair, don't we? We don't have to rely on the cosines, the law of cosines anymore. We can switch over and use the law of sines. Because now we can set up that 5.98 over the cosine of 36 degrees. Um, let's solve for y first. We'll equal 10 over the sine of y degrees. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky because we have to, this is gonna create an ambiguous angle. So we'll have two angles and we'll have to evaluate. Okay, so what we do is we run this calculation through, cross multiply, um, do the calculation and what we'll get is that y equals 79.39. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw a little picture. We're saying that y is an angle that looks like this. This is 79.39. But it could also be this angle with 79.39 over here. So we have to accept this as one possibility but then we have to go and figure out this one too. And that will be, we can see 180, the full thing, minus the 79.39. That equals, if you subtract this from 180, you get 101, no, 100, sorry, 0.61. Now, the closer that these angles are to 90 degrees, the harder it is to evaluate. Because we have to look at the picture and decide, well, is it a little bit under 90 degrees or a little bit over 90 degrees? In real life, these would be much closer to the middle, right? More like that. So this is one angle and this is the other angle. Just looking at the picture in our book, and I'll show you the actual picture, not my rendition of it. Oh boy, is that greater than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees? Well, this is one place where if you're not sure, I think it's perfectly reasonable to take a quick peek at the solutions manual and see which one of these angles is considered the correct one uh, because you can't always just visualize it. So what I am deducing is that that looks a little bit greater than a 90 degree angle to me. Here's a way we can do it. I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper, a small piece of paper I have here. It's got math notes on it, so don't pay attention to that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it alongside this seven side and look at where the paper, here, let me do it with a colored piece of paper. So you can see a little better. Do you see how now I can tell, oh look, it is greater than 90 degrees because the corner of my paper is a 90 degree angle, right? 
and I can see that when I line it up against the side that is seven units long, and then I compare it to the side that is X units long, I can see that the angle is bigger than the corner of my paper. So that tells me that side angle Y is the larger value. It's greater than 90 degrees. Let me box my answers here. Okay, that's how I can visually deduce it. Again, if you wanna take a peek at the solutions manual, just to make sure, because these are so close, go ahead and do that. I think that's a good time to check. So we deduced that Y equals, I'm gonna write it this way, 100.61. Okay, we're making progress, aren't we? Now, we could easily find angle M right now, can't we? We could do it one of two ways. We could use the law of signs to say, 5.98 over the sine of 36 degrees equals 7 over the sine of m degrees. That would work perfectly well. Right? So it's 5.98 over the sine of 30. Oh, I'm sorry. I did something wrong here. This shouldn't be cosine. We're using the law of sines here. So this should be sine, sorry, my bad. In the calculation, I did it correctly. I just wrote the wrong thing there. That should be sine. Here, let me write it here so you can see it even better. If we're using the law of sines, we're not gonna have cosine. If we're using the law of cosines, we're not gonna have sine, they match. Okay, 5.98 over the sine of 36 degrees equals seven over the sine of m degrees. We could use this. This would be the law of sines for the second time. That would work out perfectly well, but we could also just add the angles because we know they have to add up to 180 degrees. So we know that one of the angles is 36, and we know that one of the angles we don't know yet, it's M. Well, let me write the one that we do know. What did we just figure out? It was 100.61. Right, 36 was the one we were given. 100. 0.61 is the one we just figured out. And they have plus M, the one we don't know, they have to equal 180. So if we do the subtraction, we will get M equals, let's see, it's 43.61. do the math. These two together are it's 180. These two together are 136.61. So I subtract 9334. 43.39. Okay. If I do it this way, the values I get for M, I will get two because I'll have an ambiguous angle situation again, right? I will get that it's either 43.37 degrees. And again, we make a quick sketch to understand that. 43.37 is a lot easier because that's more in the middle, right? The closer our angle gets to 90 degrees, the harder it is to deduce which angle is correct. It also would create this angle, 43.37, 
we would measure our second angle not as that, but we would measure it as 180 minus that, which would give us 136 point five three. So those are our two choices, 136. 0.53. We have two ways of deciding whether or not this is the correct answer. We can look at our triangle or we can add M to our other two angles and say which one is going to work. 136 as our third angle is going to be way too big. That's equal to the other ones. Oh look, it's almost exactly. So we know, okay, this is the one that it has to be, is the 43. And I think when you calculate it, it comes out like that, 43.37, and here we get 43.39. That's just a little bit of rounding. That much error is completely fine. So we can use two different methods. You don't have to use both. I'm just using both to show you that you have options as you get closer to the end. Now we know that M equals 43. I'm going to call it 43.39. And now look what we have. We have all three sides and we have all three angles. Okay, so the, the rule of thumb I give you is use this page in the step number three to figure out what to use first and then Usually you have to start with the law of cosines in these problems, but then you can go back and use the law of sines and then maybe even something simpler from there. Okay, so you get to use your brain and figure out as you go which ones you think would be the most useful for you, which tools. Let's do the second one. The first example, as I've said, the first example is always you going, what in the actual heck is she talking about? I do not understand. And the second time through you go, oh, okay, I'm sort of getting it. And then with each additional problem, I'm hoping that your brain goes, oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. That's the point, right? Okay, 81.2, let's write our formula again. This much looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Then we do this crazy chunk at the end that we subtract out. That part looks exactly like Pythagorean, but that is the adjuster that makes us all want to cry. Remember that A and B now are the other sides. Here's our triangle, ready? Oh look, we have all three sides. We have none of the angles. So the idea that we have a pair that we could use for the law of sines, right? It's not gonna work because we don't have any of the angles. So we choose the pair we wish we had. And um, it doesn't really matter. I say let's choose, let's solve for x. and we will use the law of cosines. Okay, we have to use cosines because it's not a right triangle and we don't have any angle side pairs. All right, so we're gonna let that cursive side P equal seven, right? Because we have that side and we're gonna let a equal, oh, let's go with five, and let's do B equals eight. It doesn't matter which order those are in, but this time it's P degrees. We don't know. Okay, that's our mystery. We'll just use P. Oh no, we won't, we'll use X. All right, now we're ready to set up our law of cosines formula. So this time, we have different information. Seven squared equals five squared plus eight squared minus two times five times eight and the cosine 
of P degrees. Whew. Remember I told you back at the beginning that ideally we try to solve the law of cosines for the side rather than the angle? Well, now we're getting a taste of the other. We have no choice but to do it this way. So do it we shall, right? Okay, let's do a little simple math. 49 equals 25 plus, oh, 64. 64 minus, well, this much is 40, that's 80, minus 80 times the cosine of P degrees. All right, let's add these two together. That's what, 89. Let's subtract 89 from both sides. This is just straight algebra. We get minus 40 equals minus 80 over the cosine of P degrees. Okay, this is all canceled out. Um, and now we'll divide away this. Ooh, I'm liking what John has done with these numbers, right? So now we get that the cosine of P degrees equals two. Okay, wait a minute, no, not two, one half. Or if we use it as a decimal, 0.5. So now, right, this is one half, I just said that wrong. Okay, so now we're ready to go into the calculator. We're going to need to use the inverse cosine function, right? We'll enter 0.5 and then cosine of minus one right here. And we will get that P degrees equals Sixty degrees or it could equal 300 degrees and I'll tell you how I what I mean by that let me just use that line in my graph cosine is positive when we when we do the law of sines we're looking at the first two quadrants because sine is positive in the first two quadrants Cosine trips us up though, because cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. So that means we measure our 60 degrees here. With the law of sines, we go this way, but with the law of cosines, we have to go down 60 degrees to consider our two angles. They are also ambiguous, all right? So this is the way we evaluate. So that means that our angle could either be 60 degrees or what would it be if we went all the way around? 300 degrees. Now, the nice part is with the law of cosines, it's usually a lot easier to uh, eliminate because I don't know about you, but I feel pretty comfortable saying that X is not a 300 degree angle. How do you feel about that? Not bad, right? So that means that uh, we're calling it P, but we're also calling it X. I said to call it X and then I put it back to P. So in other words, this is X degrees, right? It's this angle that we set this all up for. So that tells me that this is a 60 degree angle. We chose this one, right? I'm gonna include the X in my answer box. That's what we set this up for, but I should have written X's here all along, but alas, it can't be 300. There's no way that this is a 300 degree angle. All right, I feel very good about that. We now have a pair. So now we can use the law of sines to solve for either one of the missing angles. I just say, let's go alphabetical. So we'll say five over the sine of six degrees equals X over the sine of y degrees. And we're gonna get we're gonna get a bloody ambiguous angle again and we'll have to sort that out. But that's fine, that's not our problem now. Five, no, this one, seven over the sine of, did I say that wrong? Seven over the sine of 60 degrees. Y, at eight over the sine of y degrees. I think I said it wrong. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Seven. 
7 over the sine of 60 degrees. They're a pair equals 8 over the sine of y degrees. I could have chosen the other side and the other angle. It wouldn't be any easier or harder. I'm just choosing to go okay. alphabetically. All right. And to calculate this, I want to just show you this again. You may find it intuitive, but we cross multiply. 7 times the sine of y degrees equals 8 times the sine of 60 degrees, and then we divide both sides by 7. And we say the sine of y degrees equals, just want to make sure you're comfortable doing that cross multiplication and then rearranging so that we get our variable by itself. That's why I divided by the 7. This goes to the calculator. We, 60 sine times 8 divided by 7, second inverse sine. That's a lot, isn't it? We do that and we get that y equals 81.77 degrees. Or we're in law of sines now. So the other angle we need to consider is the second quadrant angle. And again, we see, oh, that's really close to 90, so this is going to be a tough one. Is it 81.77 degrees, or is it 180 minus, right? It could be this angle, or it could be that angle. And that other angle is 98.23. Well, that's quite a puzzle, isn't it? So here's what we can do. We can say, let's hold off on this. Let's go solve for Z and see if that helps us, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold off on deciding between these two ambiguous angles because they are so close to each other that it's hard to make the call. And I can do my little trick See, this is angle Y. I can do my little trick with the yellow piece of paper. This time I'm lining it up against the side seven. And look, it covers up that other side. So that tells me that's less than 90 degrees, right? I can do it this way as well. We can do it that way, but there's also a mathematical way we can do it. So let's try the mathematical way. What the mathematical way is, is let's go ahead and use law of signs for angle Z, the third angle. And that will help us, what we get there will help us decide between these two. So I turn the, the page and I say, all right, we were hoping to get a nice firm angle in that calculation and then we could just subtract by 180, but we didn't. So let's use law of signs again. And this time, we, say, we use our same side seven over sine of 60 degrees equals five over the sine of z degrees. Okay, that's the third set of uh, side and angle. Okay, if we do that, we will calculate a z value Remember, we cross multiply, we do all of that. We get 38.23. And then again, it's sine, so we look at the second angle. Okay, this one's gonna be much easier to tell. Is it 38.23 or is it this? 38.23, we would find this by subtracting from 180. 180 minus 
38.23 is going to be about 142, right? <clears throat> seven, seven, one, four. 41, oh, 141. 141.77. Do you see what I mean? This last angle is also an ambiguous angle, but it's more extreme, so it's much easier to make a judgment call on which is the right angle for us. Those are our two choices, right? We just calculated that here. Let's go back and look at the book at angle Z. Angle Z is not a 141 and some change degree angle. That's little, that's the 38, okay? So we know this one has to be right. Now we can take that information and we know the other one is 60. So we know that the first angle, angle X and angle Z are what, 98.23? So angle X equals 60 degrees. Angle Z, we just figured out, is not that ambiguous. We chose the 38.23. That means these two total 98.23. So which one of these is going to include just the right number of degrees so that we hit 180. Well, we can see right here, this is the same number. So this must be the right number, 81.77. Let's add them and make sure it works. Zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one. Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? Okay, great. So that confirmed what we saw with my little yellow piece of paper, that this is the right value for y and so now it's 81.77 is Y. And Z was 38.23. Okay, and as we look at the picture, which isn't that far off from John's, we realize, okay, that is correct. All of these values are right, by the way. Uh, this one's right. And this one's right. And just to recap, this with the second side, if this wouldn't have been so vague, so ambiguous, because we were so close to the middle, we could have made the call that it was 81.77, and then we didn't we wouldn't have to use the law of sines. We could have just gone straight to this calculation, this kind of calculation, subtracting from 180. All right, so we used the law of signs twice because we wanted to double check our ambiguous result. We have two more problems to do. I'm doing a lot of talking, aren't I? Goodness. Example, 81.3. Solve the triangle for the unknown parts. Well, I see that this is an obtuse triangle. M is definitely greater than 180. Good to know. This is 28 degrees. This is B. 14, 10, and K. All right. There we have it. We see it's not a right triangle. We see we've got some, we've got one angle and two sides, but none of them make, you know, quote unquote, a pair. So we're gonna to have to use the law of cosines. Let me write that here. P squared equals A squared plus B squared. That looks very Pythagorean. I like it. Minus two AB cosine of P. P represents the pair I wish I had. That's what the P stands for, by the way, if you're into it. Now, I'm gonna remember that tidbit that I told you that ideally we choose an angle and solve for the missing side. So let's let P equal this side K and we'll let big P, our angle, equal 28 degrees 
and then A will be equal to 10, and B will be equal to 14. Now we're ready, right? So that's our first step. We use the law of cosines. I'm writing this in here just to help you follow along um, with what my tools are for solving each piece. All right, I want to use, I already figured out all the values, so now all I have to do is this. So k squared equals 10 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 10 times 14 times the cosine of 28 degrees. Okay. Math, algebra, 14 squared, 196. 13 squared is 169. That's the two I always remember together. Minus, let's see, 2 times 14 is 28 and then 10. Okay, I calculate this much in the calculator and I get 247.23. And then this would be what? 296 minus 247. So then when I do that subtraction, I get that K squared equals, would be a little less than 50, right? 48.77. When you're using the calculator, just do those little checks for yourself, right? Like I don't, I can't do that exactly in my head, but I know that if this was 297, then it would be exactly 50 difference. So I'm a little bit off, but not a lot off, right? And then square root of this, it's gonna be less than seven, right? Because if this was 49, it would be exactly seven. And so when I calculate my square root, I get 6.98. I like it, that makes perfect sense to me. There's my first answer. It's correct, by the way. Now I take it up here, and what I found was that side K equals 6.98. That also makes sense given my other two sides, right? I can see this is the shortest one. All right, great. Now we have a pair of sides. Now why did John, just a second, I just wanna check. We have, we have all three sides, but we also have a pair. So we can use the law of cosines or the law of sines. We can do whichever we want. What I would like to do I wish you were here because I would ask you to choose. I'm trying to see why John thinks we should use one or the other. Okay, in this case, we can use the law of cosines to solve for M or B, let's just say M, but either one. Or we could use the law of sines because we now have a pair. But if we use the law of sines, we would be solving for the angle and that's where we'd get that ambiguous junk again, right? So one of the advantages of the law of cosines is we're not gonna get that ambiguity, okay? We get the ambiguity from the law of sines, but not from the law of cosines. So let's go ahead and use the law of cosines again. I think I made a mistake in my earlier notes. I'll go look in a second. So I'm gonna use the law of cosines again, the second time, to avoid an ambiguous angle. I don't wanna deal with that, right? If I can avoid that ambiguous angle thing, I will, because I consider that a bit of a pain. Having to do the subtraction and then sit there and try to figure out which of the two angles is yours. 
So I'm going to solve for m this time. So I'm going to need the formula. cosine of p degrees. So then we're going to have to figure out what's our side p, what's our angle p, and what are our a and our b. So let's go back to our picture. We're choosing this, so 14 is our side. This is angle m. A will be 10 degrees, not 10 degrees, 10 units long. And our other side will be 6.98. Ooh, so tempting to want to round that to seven, but we're not going to, we're gonna to tough it out. So these are our new values for our second time through, the law of cosines. We plug it in and simplify just like we did before. So. 14 squared equals 10 squared plus 6.98 squared, that's calculator material, minus 10 times 6.98 times the cosine of m degrees. All right, now let's do a little simplifying. This, we just had this, didn't we? Yeah, it was 196 equals 100 plus 6.98 squared is 48.72. Minus, now 10 times this, I know it just bumps here, 69.8 times the cosine of m degrees. Oh, I'm sliding. Sorry, that must be so annoying when the book's all crooked and down at the bottom of the screen. All right, so let's subtract 148.72 from both sides. Just straight algebra. This cancels all of that. Now we will have, let's see, it's 37.28. And that would be a positive number equals minus 69.8 times the cosine of m degrees. All right, we're trying to get this by itself, so we have to divide by minus 69.8. Oh, that's frightening, isn't it? Okay, this is gone. So what we do is reduce this to a Decimal number, you can do this all on your calculator, but I'll write it down so you can double check your results. 0.3387 is what this should reduce to, equals cosine of m. And by all means, I hope you have your calculator with you. You can use the calculator on whatever device you're watching me on. So I propose, pause me right now and make sure you can get this and then come back. Okay, so now I'm assuming you have this. Now, use the inverse tangent button, or inverse cosine, sorry. So you'll enter this number, second, this one, and you'll get that angle M equals 109.80 degrees. Calculator knows that if the cosine of an angle is a negative angle, then that number is in the second quadrant. So it the law of cosines does not give an ambiguous answer. It figures it out accurately. Okay, and I wanna make sure I, so this is the right answer for angle M. Let's add it to our drawing. I highly recommend men doing this because it helps you keep track of what you know and what you don't know. This equals 108.9, 9.8. 
Okay, now we've got side, side, side. The last thing we need to do is find B. And since we've got two of the angles, that's not gonna be hard. Angle A, I'm sorry, the first angle we had was 28 degrees. The second angle is 109.80. And I will add the zero, I didn't write it here, but I wanna have that. And now we know that these are going to with angle B, that will be 180 degrees. So we put these two together, that's 180 minus 137. These two together are 137.80. I subtract. Whoops, I'll leave the 10 here. That's a zero. That's a two, two. Okay, so this is the size of our third angle. And that is correct also. Okay, so what did we learn in this example that we didn't already know? If you're, if you're at a place where you could use the law of signs, but it would result in an ambiguous angle, forget about it. Just keep using the law of cosines because the law of cosines never has an ambiguous result. And I want to just double check in my original notes. Yeah, okay. Law of cosine. I said here when you're talking about the law of sines and beware of ambiguous angles. I want to add this, add this to your notes. Law of cosines. does not give ambiguous angles. So that's true in any case. If you just hate that whole ambiguous angle drama, which I'm kind of with you, just use law of cosines. It'll work. Okay, one more problem. I know this is a really long lesson and kind of Insanely complicated. Ready? This one involves a story. We need a fresh page of paper. We can't think straight if we don't have clean paper. At least I can't. Ready? The figure shows two cables that are attached to a vertical tower from a point on the ground. Let me grow, draw that much for you. This is example 81.4. Okay, so there's a pole. I'll make it a little bit thicker. And it's on the ground. And there are two cables attached to it. One goes all the way up to the top. And then the other one is down a ways. But they both come to the same point here. Pretend that's perfectly straight. I know it's not. The angle between the cables is 15 degrees. The longer cable is 150 feet long. So that's this one. I'm gonna circle it just to help me see where that number belongs. And it's attached to the top of the tower. The shorter cable is attached to a point 50 feet below the top of the tower. So it's 50 from here to here. This is in the diagram too, by the way. Um, find the length of the shorter cable. And then John very 
helpfully, I think, gives this the variable of L, which I'm making in a cursive shape so that it doesn't look like a one. And then he also tells us, this is angle B. Huh. But what he wants us to find is the length of the shorter cable, so it's L. Find L. All right. Take a minute and just let that, what the actual heck are you talking about, John, wash over you? Because that's how I feel too. All right, now what we need to do is get over ourselves and figure out how we can find a triangle in all of this. And what we're gonna see is that, oh look, this is the triangle, right? Like this, that makes a triangle. Okay. Um, if you feel confused trying to see a triangle in that diagram, you can redraw it if you like. I'm just going to work from this, but feel free to redraw it without the bells and whistles if that makes you feel better. Okay, so in order to find this side, this is the side I wish I had, right? And I've got, let's see, this is the angle that goes with this. I've got 15 and 50 degrees, so I could use, I've got a pair, right? Let me circle. Here is an angle. Here is a side that's opposite it, right? Those two go together. They go together. I can use the law of signs. Am I right? Can I use it to solve for L? No. The reason why is because I don't have the angle that goes with it either. I'm missing this angle. So what I think I have to do is I have to use this to solve for angle B. Then I'll have two of the angles. I can get this one. And then I can use law of sines to solve for that. Woo, this is going to be a journey, isn't it? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the law of sines to solve, whoops, to solve, to solve for L. Okay. You can do this in a different order, but this is how my brain is seeing it. Okay, so it will be 50 over the sine of 15 degrees equals L over the sine, no. L over the sine of, let's call this M, this angle up here. And I realize, oh wait, that's a problem, right? So I can't solve for L right away because I don't have this angle. So how do I get this angle? I don't have enough information, but I can solve for this angle. So I change my mind and instead, I'm just gonna call it number two because I ruled that one out. I'm gonna use the law of sines to solve for B. Oh boy, that's going to give me ambiguous drama again. All right, fine, whatever. I don't have a choice to do it a different way. So I'm going to set it up 50 over the sine of 15 degrees equals, this time I'm going to do 150 over the sine of B degrees. That will work, right? That's gonna help me find angle B. So, I cross multiply, I divide away the piece I don't want, and that will give me the sine of B degrees equals 150 times the sine of 15 degrees, I'll write it there, over 50. That's my calculation rearranged and ready for the calculator. 
that tells me, this calculation tells me that the sine of B equals, or no, I'm sorry, the sine of B equals, all of this reduced is 0 0.7765. Five. Okay, so I simplified just this much. Now I use my inverse sine button with this value, and I get that B, the actual angle, is 50.94. Now, that's ambiguous because it's law of sines, and I solve for an angle, so typical drama. I check the second quadrant. 50.94 is going to be just a little more than halfway. And so if I draw it over here, 50.94, and then I need to calculate this angle. So I take 100 minus 50.94, and that means my other angle is 129.06. Those are my two options for angle B. One look at angle B says, hmm, Again, we can use this. That's not, that's not a little 50 degree angle. Angle B has got to be the big boy. And if I wanna double check, just to make sure, I can look in the book, because sometimes my drawings get a little off. But again, just take a piece of paper, line it up with one side of the angle, and then you'll be able to see if it's more or less than 90 degrees. That angle B is more than 90 degrees, a lot more. Okay, so I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose as my angle B, the 129.06 equals B. And by the way, that is the correct answer. I'll box it. Yay. So that means angle B right here is... Where'd it go? 129.06 degrees. Okay, now we can calculate angle M quite nicely, can't we? Okay, this, this, these were our instructions. I'll use this space right here. This will be step three, which is to find M. And we know that M plus 15 degrees plus 129 0.06 degrees, that hall has to add up to 180 degrees, right? So this, we're just adding to 180. That's this step. All right, and then we get M equals 35.94. also correct. Okay, let me add it to my picture. M equals 35.94 degrees. Now I finally have the measure of that angle so I can go back to the calculation that I wanted to do in the first place and fill in the missing number. 35.94. Yay! Now I cross multiply and divide away the point I don't get, don't want, and I get L equals 50 times the sine of 35.94 divided by the sine of 15 degrees. Let me just double check. Yep. And we get the answer to this. Oh, I ran out of space, didn't I? I guess I'll go up. And our final answer is that L equals 113.93. And this is a story problem, and these, these uh, measures are all in feet. So I can add feet to my answer. That is the correct value. That's the length of this side that we were trying to find. Okay.
So if you're confused in a problem like this, if you, if you can't see where to start, but you know where you want to end up, right? We knew we wanted to end up solving for this and that we wanted to use, we didn't want to use the law of cosines in the end because this is a side. We wanted to use the law of sines, right? We didn't have to worry about ambiguous results because this was a side. We set it up and then go, wait a minute, I don't have the information I need, right? Because I know I need to find this, but I need to have this angle. That helps us. Sometimes it helps to set up what you want in the end and then go through and figure out how to get the pieces you need in order to solve it. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. What I'm trying to say is sometimes if you imagine the calculation that you want in the end, then you know how to work backwards, okay? So go ahead and set this up if it helps you. Um, and that sometimes is an important step in figuring out what you actually do want to do. All right, this is a lot. This is difficult material. <sighs> the law of cosines. The end. Lesson 81 is over. Goodbye.